Okay, so this is a video with hubby. And Hi. what I'm going to question you about is, I guess interrupt me whenever you want because this could be long. Um, all right, so I've been reading about the forefathers. I've read Benjamin Franklin. I'm reading Thomas Jefferson. I'm reading about um, Alexander Hamilton. And I've got a John Adams book too. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm in the middle of the, the Hamilton book right now, and he was the money guy. And yes. he eventually, it, I guess him and Jefferson got along for a year, and then they fiercely were totally opposite from each other. Um, the, the Hamiltons were either called Hamiltonians or Federalists, and Jeffersons were sort of Jeffersonians or Republicans. Um, so Jefferson couldn't stand the debt because... Hamilton wanted to buy up all the state's debt and form a bank, and he thought that England was great and could model it for the Bank of England. And then other people on the other side were saying, well, that's just like creating a monarchy and stuff. And then Hamilton was saying things like, oh, well, it's great for a person that it has a you know huge farm with a bunch of slaves to say, oh, sure, we don't want to provide money for you know anybody else because you're all you're all set up. Um, so was Hamilton like a Democrat or does this not fit into these, um, roles? Oh, it doesn't fit the two party partisan system we have now. You can't describe those people as closer to either, either party. Jefferson believed that America should be an agrarian utopia in that it would be basically a country of farmers and that you would have your land, you would work your farm, and you needed very, very little central control and organization. I'm a little, and, and I'm a little biased because I love all the founding fathers, but I like Alexander Hamilton um, because I have his name. And because I think he realized that in order to have a capitalist economy where anybody could like build and start a business, you needed to have certain financial institutions that were basically set up. There needed to be ways to raise capital, to get loans from banks, to sell stock in a stock market, to be able to allow businessmen who are making real stuff. I'm not talking about businessmen who like trade paper okay. and do credit default swaps, but like a person starting a factory to borrow money to start the factory. Okay. But actually, even in those books, they were talking about um, how these horrible types of people, even back then, didn't produce anything. They were just bankers and speculators. Yes, every society has bankers and speculators called scoundrels by their founding fathers. You will see that term used an awful lot, perhaps, in books. Although, I want to make one reference to maybe payday loans or something. So there was the Revolutionary War, and they got a lot of people to be in the militias, and they promised to pay them. So they gave them these promissory notes, and but they weren't getting their money from the government. So some speculators or whatever, bankers or whatever, went around and said, I'll give you so much on the dollar or right. whatever, and collected a bunch of these notes. Then when it came time to discuss that in the Congress or whatever, they were saying, well, gee, should we like just dismiss the speculators? Because we, we only really have obligations to pay the veterans, you know, should we just dismiss these scoundrels, you know, these spe speculators? But, but yet, the veterans were going without pay mm -hmm. all that time. Almost like the payday loan issue that we discussed with my parents about how horrible payday loans are. But then, well, somebody in a desperate situation is choosing to do that on their own free will and stuff. Right. But in this case, we're talking about Goldman Sachs and AIG and these other people taking their worthless 
pieces of paper to the government wanting to be paid off on them with a bailout. Mm -hmm. These scoundrels went to the Continental Congress or whoever and said, well, we got all this script, all these IOUs, mm -hmm. and now, you know, you owe us money. And in some sense, morally and ethically, you would like, screw them. I mean, the speculators. You know, that could be a way to look at it. Um, the point is that capitalism is the best way we know to get the most money to the most people to have the highest standard of living. There needs to be laws and regulations to prevent the scoundrels from doing what they will always do, right? There will always be crooks when money and paper are changing hands. Mm -hmm. And rather than abolish capitalism and banking and stock markets, what you need to do is to make sure that you have an open and transparent and regulated system of financial markets. Um, <clears throat> so that's my, that's, that's my view. Um, back to Alexander Hamilton, you know, the fact that we have the U.S. dollar can be credited to Alexander Hamilton rather than every bank in every state printing their own money. You can imagine that would have made it much harder for the country to function and yeah, to but, expand but his, to he, the other ocean. Okay. Another thing that he brought up was um, taxing spirits and um, federally taxing spirits. And so in western Pennsylvania, um, they were doing moonshine and stuff. So then it was like, okay, so then they said, you know, no way, we won't pay and stuff. And then it was just had to be discussed, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to send our United States Army, which kind of was supposed to be for fighting foreign enemies, are we going to send them to our own citizens? And Hamilton pushed, yes. We have to, because we, if we don't mm -hmm. enforce the laws, then we don't have the laws. Well, there was no FBI or DEA at that time, was there? There was nobody else to collect the taxes. Mm -hmm. um, the point of the matter is, my view is Jefferson wanted chaos, just about. He wanted, and, and you have to try to get this concept, and I'm not trying to pound on a guy from my home state. Thomas Jefferson, but his vision of America was that from the Atlantic to the Pacific coast, you would have a bunch of farms. Uh, that was his vision of America. Alexander Hamilton's vision was the leading industrial nation in the world. And yeah. in order to have the leading industrial nation in the world, you need an army, you need money, you need a central bank. There are just basic things, services, that a federal government has to provide. Right, and um, I guess when Hamilton left office as the Secretary of Treasury initially under Washington, um, he thought everything was, was square away. Um, our credit was good around the world. It was trading. The government bonds is what he got going, I guess, was trading. Mm -hmm. 10% higher than they were worth or something wow. like that. Uh -huh. um, and so that all seemed good. We could get money from other countries and stuff. Um, so he took the debt from the states and made a profit on it. I guess. Basically. I mean, this kind of stuff is just, it's no clearer to read about it from the very beginnings. Yeah. You know. But if he took everything, yeah, but if he took all the states' debt and he issued government bonds, and they were actually trading 10% higher than their face value, then he actually made money for the, for the U.S. government. That meant people were bullish on America, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, good reputation. Now, I don't know if the French Revolution, but people losing their heads and stuff like that had to do with anything. Or that was happening, uh, you know. Well, people admired the democracy that was formed and mm -hmm. put a lot of faith in it, you know. Uh -huh. And our money, as far as I know, was backed by gold. 
No, so, actually, it wasn't really. Oh, was it? Um, some, one of the guys, it's funny, all these guys, you know, like, all the schools around here. You know? Well, then James Madison said, and then uh, George Mason said, and then, well, anyway, you got all these schools around us, you know, named all these things. But anyway, um, um, but yeah, they, they said it's treacherous, whatever, to have, you know, things beyond whatever gold and silver that we have. And in Ben Franklin, even in the Pennsylvania money, he uh, declared they needed more money at one point in time, and it had nothing to do with anything being backed. So you're saying Madison and Mason wanted funny money? Well, I'm not... Fiat money, as it's called, I, as Ron Paul calls it? I, I'm not sure about the names and stuff. This gets to be confusing reading. Well, not not backed by anything. That's one of them. They didn't like that. They, they didn't they, like they, it. They, they didn't like it. Okay. Yeah. Hamilton, I guess, liked it. Yeah, well, they can get pretty wild without it, so we shall see. But uh -huh. So you can see that, obviously, the Democrats of today are not like Alexander Hamilton. You know, printing trillions of dollars at the drop of a hat. Oh. Wait, well, wait a minute. No, he didn't. Aunt Hamilton did not. Didn't. What am I saying? Hamilton didn't want it backed by anything. Oh. You told me the opposite just five minutes ago. And then the other ones did want it backed by something. Oh, really? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, and, um, something else about money, too. Well, okay, so you're talking about the Democrats and stuff. Now, Pushing for people to get home loans with funny money kind of is a Hamilton thing. Pushing for but, home loans? Well, you know, everybody should get a home. By people who can't pay it back? Well, I don't know. If you're trying to compare the two, is, you know, if you wanted lots of cash out there beyond the gold, Hamilton, now that I've cleared that up, I guess. Oh, okay. So he wanted, right. But. But the point is that the bonds were trading for 10% above their face value, which says that the money supply was tight. Oh. I mean, what that tells me is that there was, there was control on the funny money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Bonds would yeah. go to zero if you were just throwing okay, money out Okay, because they said something about there. that because people wanted the privilege to own them or something. Well, I mean, <laughs> when you're privileged to... To loan a country money, then you must think their currency is really strong. Okay, but then maybe it wasn't available before someone wanted to open a textile mill or something? Well, I don't know what the money supply figures were, but you need, you need to create money to create business. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what it comes down to. Mm. There was some weird thing about how somebody composed this government thing from Niagara Falls to, oh, this is so complicated, never mind, he used, somehow used government money and then managed to create industries and stuff out of it, but. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the basis of an industrialized society that Ben Franklin could borrow money to open a printing shop. If I go back to that era, maybe instead of having to borrow it privately, he could go to a bank. Mm -hmm. Or that Carnegie or Mellon could borrow money to open a steel mill. Mm -hmm. There needs to be banks and there needs to be money to lend. That's like a simple principle of any industrial society, you know, unless you're going to go around and bum money off your friends. Yeah, Hamilton it. was frustrated at one point in time that all we had here was farms and artisans and shops. We didn't have any factories. Right. That equals industrial society, right? Yes. Yeah. And... You need money to have that. Mm -hmm. Even if you print the money, but it's going into factories, that's the whole point. 
if I borrow a billion dollars and build a factory, I'm not creating inflation. If I borrow a billion dollars and gamble it away on credit default swaps, I am creating inflation. Because I'm playing with money. I'm playing with the money I borrowed instead of building a factory to make stuff. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So Hamilton, you know, obviously wanted people to have factories. Right. Yeah. Um, like I was telling you from my combined books, um, as Ben Franklin was out in uh, Paris, he was touring these factories and then sketching up, you know, how to do it. And then Jefferson was touring farms and stuff and putting seeds in his, or no, maybe that was Hamilton, putting seeds in his pocket or something. And then Hamilton was um, kind of looking around the United States, seeing what could be exploited. You know, what do we have? You know, we have good soil, we have, you know, coal, we have whatever, you know. Right. How are you? You can go into business and mm -hmm. sell stuff to other people, like to have foreign trade, you know. Mm -hmm. So what are the, so going up to modern days, what are the things that you were saying that, about the stock market that should be closed up? Well, I think, the, I just think the whole concept of making side bets, which is called derivatives, okay? A derivative is a thing that is like vaporware. It's, it's like a bet on something else, like a stock option. Or even selling stock short. Okay. So I don't like derivatives. I don't like the concept of derivatives because they're not real things. They're side bets. Okay. These subprime mortgages were turned into derivatives in a sense, where you know a whole pile of actual mortgages were represented by a bond somebody created. Mm -hmm. And you know, that caused a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I am all for stock markets. I am all for borrowing money for real stuff. And by the way, I would argue, I would make the vociferous argument that a factory is just as real or even realer than a house. Even though, you know, I heard Barney Frank make comments that a house was better than a factory, which I think is crazy. Because remember, a house doesn't make more stuff. You well, know, you a know, factory does. If we had kept all of our factories in the United States, then, you know, as we grew and grew and grew and everything, we had all these factories and we're producing like China, then yeah, you could say, well, geez, now everybody needs a house so they can buy five TVs and stuff like that. Yes, that's called supply side economics. Making stuff gives you money to buy consumer stuff. So YouTubers, I don't agree with what's going on now because it's backwards, because it's demand side. Putting money into the hands of middle class or poor people so that when they go to Walmart, they can stimulate the economy is not the way to do it. Okay. Um... Uh, money is going in the hands of bankers, not people. Oh no, the stimulus bill, the one trillion dollar stimulus bill Obama passed is basically handing money to poor and middle class people to buy consumables. What, like $13 a week? It's not a cost of living increase. So you're going to get all bent out of shape about um, doubling the length of unemployment checks while all that money is being poured into the AIG types? Screw AIG. I didn't want them to get a nickel, nor General Motors, nor Citibank, nor Citicorp. The fucking government, like conservative right, hammered Bush for his tarp and for all this stuff. We hate government spending, and we hate it under Bush, and we hate it under Obama. The federal government's out of control. It should be shrunk by an order of magnitude. It's too big. It fosters corruption. Bankers and social workers and welfare recipients and community organizers 
General Motors, Chrysler, whoever it is, and now it looks like the New York Times is asking for a bailout. Can you believe that? They are talking about it. This is all because the government is just too damn big and has too much money and there's too much corruption and basically people who go to work and pay taxes are being ripped off and it needs to stop. There needs to be a revolution. We need to throw the scoundrels out and we need to start fresh.